So I heard the uh, the media estimates on the crowd side. The first one was there's tens of thousands of people here. I think the latest I heard were two. I heard over 300,000, and I heard over 500,000. And if that's coming from the media, God only knows how many. This day is a day that we can start the heart of America again. And it has nothing to do with politics. It has everything to do with God. Everything turning our face back to the values and the principles that made us great. We have a choice today. We have a choice. We can either look at our scars, look at the scars of the nation. Let's be honest. If you look at history, America has been both terribly good and terribly bad. It has been both. But we concentrate on the bad instead of learning from the bad and repairing the bad and then looking to the good that is still out in front of us within our reach. We have a choice today to either let those scars crush us or redeem us. We are gathered here today in a hallowed spot. Here, Abraham Lincoln, a giant of an American, casting a shadow on all of us. We look to a giant for answers. Behind you, in front of me, the Washington Monument. Alone, tall, straight. If you look at the Washington Monument, you might notice its scars. But nobody talks about that. Nobody says, look to it now. Nobody says, yeah, I don't know, but a quarter of the way up it changes color. Did you know that it did? Look at it. Look at its scars. How did the scar get there? They stopped building it in the Civil War. And when the war was over, they began again. No one sees the scars of the Washington Memorial, the Washington Monument. We see what it stands for. No one also talks about what's on top, facing east. Just two words, Laos Deo. Praise be to God. When I was 18 years old, I used to sit in between the second and third column there. I'd come about five o'clock in the morning and I would sit there and I would watch the sunrise over the Capitol. I just did it again with my now, in college children, I did it this week. This is an amazing place. I told them not a lot had changed, except now at the end, a salute to the greatest Americans, the greatest American generation, the World War II Memorial at the end of the reflecting pool. <laughs> Men and women who did what they had to do, not because they wanted to, but because they were faced with no choice. You cannot coexist with evil. They did the right thing. They stood against all odds. The Vietnam Memorial here, saluting all the grand veterans that we didn't, Welcome home when they came. We finally welcome them home now. And who 
through these trees, through these trees, a haunting memorial of the Korean veterans. We are, we are standing, we are standing amongst giants and in between the reflecting pool. Why? Is it so we can say, wow, look how dirty it is? No, it's not just to reflect the monument. It is intended for us to reflect, to reflect on what that man meant, and those men meant, and those, and those, and that man meant, and the man who stood down on those stairs and gave his life for everyone's right to have a dream, Martin Luther King. That's what the reflection is all about. We are to reflect on what these great men did. Why did they give their lives? And all of them did. George Washington, he was a general. He fought and fought and fought and fought. And when it was falling apart and they needed the Constitution, they came riding to his front door and they knocked on his door and he answered it and they said, General, we will not survive. It's falling apart. We need you at the Constitutional Convention. His response was, have I not yet done enough for my country? He closed the door. He reflected, mounted his horse, and gave yet another part of his life because it was the right thing to do. So what did these great people give their lives for? They gave it for the American experiment. And that's what this is, an experiment. It's not just a country, it's an idea that man can rule himself. That's the American experiment. We have a choice to make today. Do we, Americans that live today, surrounded by giants who gave it all, do we today say the experiment cannot work? Man must be ruled by someone. It does not end here. It shall not end now. It shall not end in my generation, in your generation. It is up to us. I came here last Saturday. I wanted to spend some time with my children. I wanted to show them these great monuments. I went into the Lincoln Memorial and I stood there and I read the Gettysburg Address on one wall and the second inaugural address on the other. I went up and touched the words and lifted my children up so they could touch the words as well. The words are alive. Our documents, our most famous speeches, are American scripture, and they are alive today just as any other scripture is. It speaks to us from the past. If I, if I may, if 
I may share with you the 